Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Dialing In, and today I continue on with another Helix Firmware 3.0 version of Dialing In, and this time I'm gonna take a look at the brand new Swedish chainsaw model that we have that's been given to us by the fine folks at Line 6. So the Swedish chainsaw is a model of the Boss HM2 uh, distortion pedal. Uh, I believe this was originally released in 1983, and I believe this is a model of the original one. It's kind of a unique pedal. I remember when this came out, I was nine years old. Well, I don't remember that, but I started playing guitar when I was 10. And uh, I remember very quickly being kind of introduced to this by a friend, uh, trying it and going, oh my goodness, that's terrible. <laughs> I never, never really was something I liked. And who knows, I, I, what was I playing it through? Possibly like an old tiny 10 watt crate amp or something like that. So, uh, my, you know, and what did I know? Uh, being this, uh, you know, 10 year old who just started playing and barely play a chord. So anyways, uh, enough of that uh, nonsense story. But it's, it's kind of interesting to see this back and to be able to take a look at this and see how Line 6 folks did with this and also some of the possible uses of it but also learning about what the controls do because on the surface when we see the controls, we might think, oh, okay, pretty simple, right? Um, as we'll see in a minute, but it's a little more to it than just that from what I can tell. So let's go over to HX Edit and take a look and see what we have. So let me explain to you really quickly what I've done here. I have my normal um, template set up, you know, compressor at the end, uh, which I'm going to shut off for this because I, I don't want the compressor if it's if it's kicking in to actually kind of you know squash the sound anyway. This is going to have plenty of uh, compression from the distortion pedal, so we'll leave that alone for now. Although if I was still building a preset with it, I'd likely have that on. I like that on most things. Uh, I have a parametric EQ at the end, just leaving that alone uh, with my low and my high cuts. Then I have a little tiny bit of room reverb like I always do since we're recording direct. I always find, you know, when we record with a microphone, we're always gonna have some room ambience on it and this is going to just kind of mimic that instead of being bone dry. I have a delay, it's not gonna be turned on for this. Um, and I have my normal uh, uh, low and high shelf, all the frequencies above 650 hertz, boosted by 2 dB and all the frequencies below uh, cut by 2 dB. It's just my starting point. You can, you know, either turn that off or whatever you want to do with it if you don't like it. Um, so I have a Placator clean amp through a 412 Greenback 25 on snapshot number one. And I have uh, a Placator dirty through a 412 Greenback 25 with these various settings. Now, my thoughts behind this, you'll notice 121 ribbon on that, 121 ribbon on that, both I believe four inches back. Yeah, it's a setting I like, but let's just go back to snapshot one here and turn off the Swedish chainsaw. I just have the placator clean set up to sound like this. A little bit of breakup on the uh, humbucker pickup. If we go more to some single coils. clean. So what I wanted to do is use the Swedish Chainsaw to see how it sounds when used with a mostly clean platform. And then if I switch over to the Overdrive Amp uh, Snapshot 2 with the Swedish Chainsaw off, I have the Placator Dirty set up to sound like this. So again, back to Snapshot 1. I could probably give this a little more channel volume. A little better. So that's just the amp sound. So let's take a look at the Swedish Chainsaw now with the clean setting. So when we have this, I'm gonna turn it on. I'm not gonna play anything quite yet. Uh, we have drive, bass, treble, and level. Okay, the level control is gonna be like any other device. It's just going to balance sort of the volume of this pedal when it's turned off or on so we can get it to either boost the signal or unity gain or whatever we want. So it's basically the output level of this pedal. The drive, fairly simple. The amount of distortion and sustain this is going to create. Now the thing about this pedal, you know, you get to a point where a distorted sound is almost as distorted as it can get and it just kind of keeps saturating so you get this more sustain and, and almost gets fuzzy in a way, right? So that's what this pedal is going to do, I have found in my use. Uh, so we have the drive control, it's going to be the amount of distortion and it doesn't start off with really subtle distortion. 
The bass and treble controls are interesting because they're not from what I understand from reading the original manual and also from what my ears are telling me. This is not just kind of something that's contouring a whole bunch of frequencies. The bass frequency from what the original manual says is it's boosting or cutting in and around the 100 hertz area, kind of like in what I can tell, like more of what a parametric EQ would do. And the treble is boosting or cutting the one kilohertz area. Now, I know in the manual it says if it's in the middle setting, there's no effect to those frequencies. And then from what I've understood in reading about this, and again, this is all, I, I haven't been able to confirm this, but my ear sort of tells me it's similar to the, what, what I've read, is that we have about plus or minus 20 dB of boost uh, for those sets of frequencies, okay? So I believe this comes up with these settings here. Well, actually, let's just do this. Let's just come out of it and we'll, we'll come back and put it in. Okay, so it comes up with drive at 6.2, bass at five, treble at seven. So let's see what that sounds like on the clean amp. So again, here's the clean amp. We'll engage the sweetest chainsaw. All right, so see why we got this chainsaw <laughs> kind of uh, name attached to this, right? <laughs> All right, let's crank the drive up and see what happens. Loads of sustain, but you see what I mean? It's almost like you don't get any more distortion. It just kind of sustains and saturates more, if that makes any sense. Okay, so where it gets interesting is with the bass and treble control. So let's do this. Let's set these both at five. Okay, now um, I'm gonna crank the treble all the way up to 10. What a strange sound, right? Very filtered. So this is why I'm saying this doesn't act like a normal treble control. Let's bring this all the way down. We get that very scooped in the mids, right? So uh, interesting stuff. Let's do the same thing. We'll put that back to five. We'll listen to the bass now. Really thins it out. really fattens it up. Now, what I was saying to you before in my research is it said to me that the bass is controlling in and around 100 hertz uh, with about 20 dB of booster cut and the treble is in around 1000 hertz. So we can do this by going to, and mimic this by going to our patch parametric EQ. And I'm gonna say go here, I'll set to 100 hertz, I'll set this to maybe, I don't know, maybe 1.5 and I'm gonna, crank this up. So here it is without any boost on the 100 hertz setting. Let's see if that sort of sounds similar to what we have when we boost the bass on the Swedish Chainsaw. It 
It really is. Now this is apparently 20 dB of boost. Let's go there. And then come over to our EQ at the end here and boost that all the way up. Really similar effect, right? So it's very similar to having that parametric EQ do its thing. So let's do the same thing though on our parametric EQ, go to around to one kilohertz with same sort of thing, maybe a, a Q of 1.4, and we'll boost that up, sorry, by 12 dB, let's say. <laughs> Now, if we go set that to zero, go back and crank this, a lot more. Back to our parametric. So kind of similar, but not exact in the one kilohertz, but it, you see that these are not just your run of the mill treble and bass control. So how can we use them? Well, let's keep our drive up on 10 here. Remember, we're going into the clean amp and let's listen. Okay, I would say, you know, you could leave your bass there, pump this up to maybe six. Around eight, it starts to get a little bit odd f filtering going on. So depending on what you're looking for, I would stay somewhere between five and seven on this. Maybe even down around six, I kind of like it there. The bass, I'm kind of liking at five. But again, depending on what you want, you might want to stay in that same sort of five to six range. Okay, so let's keep it there. Well, now let's bring that drive all the way down to zero. With it off. Really thins the tone out. Um, I could also, if I want to use this as a more subtle effect, maybe bring the treble down, bass up. So it really thins that tone out. Um, at those settings, you know, I don't know, maybe we crank the bass up. Almost gives it a, a fuzz quality to it. Some nice tones in there though. Definitely gonna cut through the mix regardless of what you're doing with it. Uh, let's see what happens as we roll that in. I'll go back to the bridge pickup, roll that in a bit more. Rolls into distortion pretty, pretty fast.
can throw some delay on that. So, I mean, this is going to be an acquired taste, obviously. If we're going for something very smooth and fat and warm, not really the pedal for you. But if you want something that's going to cut, this is definitely going to cut. I could see this getting a lot of use. So, a nice gain range never gets really too clean. You know, and if you wanted to roll that treble back. Still keeps its sort of chainsaw-y sound to it though. All right, so we see how that reacts with a clean amp. Now let's go over to an overdrive amp. Now, here's our tone without it. And that's on, like I said, these settings on the placator dirty. I didn't go too ridiculously heavy on this. But could we use the heavy metal pedal or the Swedish chainsaw to kind of shape that tone into a different sound where this is kind of beefy and fat. But maybe we want to be able to have the ability to kick a pedal in and not even necessarily add a whole lot more distortion, but just to shape the tone. So what, let's see, set the drive to zero, bass and treble on five, and let's see what happens when we plug this into the chain. actually darkens the sound up a bit. So let's do this. Let's bring that treble up to maybe six. Not a adding much saturation, but let's leave it there tone-wise. It's not changing things in a huge way. Let's bring this into even 0.5 on the drive. Now we're getting a little more sustain, right? Not a huge, huge tonal difference. So we could use it here to just shape that tone if we wanted to. I'm gonna, let's see what happens if we go to 10. I think it's gonna get kind of wonky. Really changes that tone, but we know that after about eight, it starts to do these funny things, right? <laughs> I'm really liking that treble around seven. So at there, we're just adding a bit of saturation. Let's go up to one, just subtle steps. So not a huge tonal difference, but it's adding some nice sustain to the sound. Let's keep going. Let's jump right up here, maybe a couple more steps. So I find as we add more drive, it's actually thinning the sound out a little bit more. Five. Let's just go crazy up to ten. <laughs> Thank you.
It seems like the more the drive goes up, the more I feel like I want to pull this treble control down. <laughs> actually usable tone there. It's saturating the sound, but it's not really changing the tone a huge amount. If we want more of that chainsaw effect, we just crank that treble up, but let's leave it around there. Crazy sustain. I'm not even playing very loud here. With lots of harmonics. Lots of possibilities here. So pretty interesting once we understand what the controls do. So a couple options here, right? Use it with a clean amp platform to add just tons of that sort of uh, grindy heavy metal distortion if that's what we're after. Or use it in more subtle ways in front, uh, even in front of the clean amp to just get a certain tone that's really gonna cut. But also using it with an already distorted amp to shape that tone like we can with a lot of other pedals. This one's pretty unique, especially with its unique kind of bass and treble filters that we have on here. So I don't know, I hope that was useful to some of you folks and you enjoyed that look at the new Swedish chainsaw and I hope it's something that you can uh, maybe implement into your patches if you need that particular sound or that particular use. It's uh, I think it's a nice addition. When I first heard it was going to be in there I was like really? But you know what it's kind of cool. It's always nice to have a lot of tools at our disposal even if it's something we only use every now and then it's still nice to have. So anyways I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, check out the Swedish chainsaw. Make sure you update to firmware 3.01 that's the latest and uh, working really nicely for me and everything is, is going well. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some use out of it or enjoy it. Please subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. Thank you guys again so much for uh, sharing your time with me. I'll be back real soon. Ciao for now.